Pashu Atara. Asya Santri got a call to have in the uh, squad on the bench currently. He's a Zezet, who is an Ivorian, and also have a uh, Alu Atara, who has uh, a Ghanaian mother and an Ivorian father. That's this play. It's a foul there, just uh, giving an opportunity there for the Ivorians to restart play. A switch of play, beautiful there to Amad Dragao. Actually, beautifully there to Siri Ande. Oh, look at us again. It is under diving ahead that comes out there from Kumasi Asante, Koto Korent, and Rian Su. Never trying to give anybody opportunity at all to, you know, frustrate the Porcupine Warriors. So it's an adversary cup there between the two sides. And back in 2019, Trari Adama was not part of this game on the man of the match. And so there's the first corner kick of the opportunity. Going wide there for the Ivorians to see if they can upset Marcia Sante got go with the first goal. Obviously, going to be a throw in advantage to the Porcupine Warriors who picked up a win against the Gold Stars in the Ghana League. That was their 19th league game and has scored their 19th goal, Marcia Sante got go. And of course, they have conceded 13 times. Play a sec, Mimosa, Ahmad Dragao, passing his way into the box. There, Kumasia Santi Godoko can't really get the ball away. Only as far back. And again, the Ivorians, Cindy Andy, another cross into the box. Kumasia Santi Godoko want to calm things down with Richmond Lamte. It's uh, the fans' favorite, Richmond Lamte. And he has the ball. The fans, obviously, looking forward to get him on the way. Or perhaps uh, give Mimosa all the support. And Lamte again, he's got the power. To give them the split or defense splitting passes and possession lost by Kumasia Sante Koloko. And that is obviously a foul on Lamine Kone. The first foul of the game there being committed there by Kumasia Sante Koloko. Lamine Kone giving the ball away. Tackle there from uh, Richmond Lamte. The very very dangerous position there, and so the yeah, Ivorians can take advantage. And again, Henry Ansu heads the ball away. Possession won back by Ahmad Dragao. Paraco picking possession. Mokwala. Paraco in possession. Armin Kuhl, Abayaya. And Lamte controlling things in midfield. Probably play there, Marcia Santi Goloko. John Tedeku's ball in, ball he taken. Has been picked up beautifully there by Aka. The sensor, Lamin Corney racing for this one. And Lamin Corney certainly would have to drag the ball deep in there. Oh, lovely play, a sec. And again, the intended pass to Salib Gerasuba. Didn't quite get to him. But Captain play beautifully. And I said, Mimosa really getting the opportunity. Andy. Sent to the left hand side. Ball sent in again. Kodoko trying to clear the lines. Being cleared away by Jamina. fans will be expecting to see how Marcia Santi could be able to at least test their pauses against these Ivorian side who are very strong in terms of what they've been able to produce the uh, league. So this is the tenth time Marcia Santi got to play in a sec Mimosa. But have picked up four wins. Against a sec Mimosa and the Ivorians I picked up three wins against Marcia Santiago de Co and two of the games in the drone game. Lamin Corner again. Good control from him. 
ball sent into left hand side once again. Having seen a lot of runs there from the Ivorians. And the foul has been given away. Talif Yasuba. Fouled. Six minutes of play gone already, and we're seeing the, the possession there going to the Ivorians. The visitors who currently are trying their best to make sure that they have the chance to upset Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Again, it's Rich Molante's second foul committed in this game. As far as against Lame Corny, and there's going to be a long way out there, but it was wide. I expect to see a lot of runs there from 19 shirted captain Baudelaire Aka. And Sue, that's it down to the right hand side. Big Jamina here. He swamped there by the Ivorians. He quite get anywhere to get the ball away, but there's the rescue there from Richmond Lamte. Justice Blay, long way out there, picking up uh, the run over uh, Watara. And Charles Fuller gets it away. The flag is up for an offside. And we've seen a lot of runs there coming through from Yao Afonso on the left hand side or attack there for the Ivorians. From Folae Charles, who is part of the or was part of the Ivorian team that won the AFCON. They also have Andre Cyril, the right back, who was part of the AFCON 2023 squad. Captain uh, Delay Aka is uh, the referee from Togo. Wasia Chiogwe trying to calm things down in this particular game, there for the two sides. Ibrahim Kulibali far away gets it straight to Parker and now comes in Benito Zali. We have been able to dictate the pace and try to push Marcel Santiago to go into a defensive shell. Not really giving that opportunity at all to come out. Here comes one look, Kulibali. The play, a sec, keeping possession, neat and tight. Ashua Tara goes back straight to Benito Zadi. Oh, lovely once again. Here's the captain, Aka. And here comes Matt the Gaul. Simply nowhere to pick the passes. Here comes Aka again. Ibrahim Kulibali charging forward on the left hand side. He finds support there on Afonso Yao. Afonso drags it back again. Once again, it's the Ivorians. They are simply delight to watch at the moment. Amand. But we're able to get the ball out as far as the throw in against Marcia Santiago. Because so far, it's been a set mimosa who have been detecting the players in the last 10 minutes. I mean, Connie, he has support there from Sir Andy. Poor play there from I mean, Connie. Hey. Always looking for the long balls there for. Koala, not to the delight of the fans there. Kumasi Asante Kodoko fans really expect the team to keep possession. 
and play among themselves. It's just as the Ivorians are doing and not really doing so. Pretty much it's supporting Mendel for the fans. watching 
but they want to very put out the very best, justify the calls for many more local players to be included in the national team. As, as uh, many observers, football fans and journalists alike have advocated for. So I'm sure they're going to regroup, put themselves together and get back into the game. But like I said, the Ivorians are looking pretty comfortable on this pitch. And playing in Ghana almost feels like playing at home. When you talked about the, having the... to play in Kumasi because the last time they played against Kumasi at Santé Kodoko in a cup match in 2019 it was the 2-4-20 anniversary cup Kumasi at Santé Kodoko by in a 39 minutes when Kevin Yaku scored that goal and so the Ivorians are aware I'll tell you what the last time they played here was back in 2004 that was their competitive game and Mokuala is outside I was hoping that was going to be a great opportunity for the home team but got offside and like I alluded to, I mean, there's so much that has gone down, has gone down between these two sides. Lots of history, and I'm sure that you've made allusion to that already. I tell you what, the uh, goal scored there by Alfonso Yao is the tenth or eleventh goal the Ivorians have scored against Kumasi Asante Kodoko, and that is the twelfth goal Kumasi Asante Kodoko have conceded against Asak Mimosa. As you indicated, this is the 10th time Kumasi Asante Kodoko are playing Asset Mimosa in any competition. down and so far the partnership up front there between Mokuala and Carlo Matara hasn't really worked out to perfection it comes Baba Yaya and Jamina pushing play down to the far side again Kodoko losing possession out the chance to see if they can spread possession Otara Babayaya Rocky Jamuna goes back to Henry Ansu gets the ball away and much to the annoyment of the fans there Lamin Kone Ponte looking for space and Ansu needed to redeem himself I don't know what the Playing instructions out to these players, but they seem to be allowing the Ivories very much deep into their half. And you would have to go for such tackles. I mean, if you keep the ball, you play high up, you wouldn't allow the ball to come so deep, allowing so much freedom for you to make such clearances. Now, look at that. That was a near own goal, wasn't it? Absolutely. There's been a lot of a G3 situation there for Henry Ansu. Hasn't really been the sort of uh, composure in this game, Henry Ansu. Uh, trying to get the ball away, he nearly got himself into another I mean, if you play so deep, situation. Yeah, playing so deep and allowing the Ivorians to, to to do whatever they want on this in this in this part of the field. I mean, this is uh, what you're going to get. You're going to get jittery as time goes on. Deal with the ball high up, so you don't have to resort to desperate clearances like we saw earlier on. That led to a, is it a throwing or a free kick? Well picked up beautifully by Sir Andy. And one another player part of the Avorian national team. And this is Charles Holly. That's a long one deep inside the half of Marcia Santiago to go headed down. 
Cairns goes to the advantage of Marcia Sante. Kotoko currently down by Coach Neil. That's a blistering and an amazing strike there by Afonso Yao. Lamte. No reason for that defense with the pass there. Was looking to pick up Kwari. He scored as many as two goals there for Kumasia Sante Kotoko. Kala Tuari. Put from Brickham Chelsea to Kumasia Sante Kotoko. Prosper Ogun will be going to see the team will be able to pick up the pieces once again or maybe come back stronger against Asek and Julian. Pretty much calm. Again, Kodoko. Amat Dragao strikes it in and Kodoko nearly. I see the second goal. And again, that's how swift they are. Look at Charles Foley up his line and gets the ball away. You see how quickly the ball comes back into their defense and they are allowing the Ivorians to do whatever they want. I mean, they're living quite dangerously playing this way. Like I said, I, I do not know what the playing instructions are, but it's taking them quite a while to settle into their game. And uh, I may be wrong, but they do not seem too confident on the ball and they lose the balls too easily to the Ivorians. Another corner kick advantage to Asset Mimosa. Conoco again, having to struggle to get themselves out of their defensive line. You know, had the striker positioned himself well, that could have been another goal for Cote d'Ivoire because if you ask me, that was a free header. Two players were clearly unmarked and he was clearly un unprepared for that cross as it came in. Always oh, looking for the round there of uh, the goal scorer, Alfonso Yao, Marcia Sante Coloco. Struggling to get themselves out. Oh, oh going against the Pokemon Warriors. And Kodoko have picked up 24 trophies. Nine FA Cups, Super Cups being three of them. That's a foul there by Michael Che Jamina. Oh no. I believe uh, Suba. A bit disappointed there for Marcia Santa Coloco to lose the President Cup twice in a row because they did lose last season against a crowd hearts of folk and and now they dumped by a goal to nail. A lovely play here. Ahmad Asari comes out. Oh, that should have been the second. They call for handball and they've been given this penalty. Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's a handball situation there against the Kumasi Asante Coloco. Player and so is a penalty there for Asset Mimosa. I mean, then if you play like this, I mean, this is what you're going to get. What's the ball whipped in? Asari punched the ball out and the rebound off the hand of Justice Play. And that's what the Ivorians kept saying that that is a handball situation against Marcia Sante Kotoko. Well, the, the player did his best to play the ball. The Justice play has been yellow card at the first player to go into the books of the referee for that handball situation. Unfortunately. But this is what you get if you play deep and invite the attacks. Well, that's the lovely run there by Ahmad the Grau. What a lovely boy. Asari did almost everything possible. And when the ball came back, ooh, Justice play was up, was. I don't know, but maybe the goalkeeper could have done better than that in punching the ball maybe in a different direction. Well, in that situation, he thought that he had already cleared his line. But again, it was the position of the centre-backs of Marcia Sante Kodoko, allowing the ball straight into the Ivorian player. Making it easy for the Ivorians to just foray into their defence. Simply bring the balls down the flanks and having easy crosses, what you're going to get. 
It would be unfortunate, really, like you said, I mean, to, to lose the cup twice in a row, right in front of their fans. Well, they've been talked about Kuroko losing some interesting cup matches in Kumasi. He lost the Confederations Cup back in 2004 here. They've also lost the CAF uh, in this cup competition as well. So, uh, the captain for the side, Budle Aka, who has been selected to hit this ball, they've been to see if they can have the chance of getting a second goal there for a sec here. Aka against Osari. Opportunity back for the Ivorians, the visitors. They go up by two goals to nil, but it's going to be Asari. Can Asari stop? No. And that makes it 2-0. That's a lovely for penalty. Mimosa. They simply are flying high in Ghana, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Great penalty. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting them to, to miss. I mean, if you know, if you trace the Ivorians, they're really great when it comes to penalties. And the out of penalty taken. Well, I tell you what, the excitement will be there for the Iberians. One day, have one day, Afcon title and Asset Mimosa leading by two goals to nil. And that's how gradually, confidently, he dispatched the ball for the second goal. And that's the captain, Budele Aka. They're on quite a roll, aren't they? I mean, at a point it was going the same for South Africa in various divisions, various levels of football. They are women. And that stage was also for for, for the Senegalese and uh, Zambia. And last year, a couple of years, uh, Senegal have be, just been rolling out the honours. The problem maybe this is this is just the beginning for La Cote d'Ivoire to be on a good streak like that. So they'll be glad to add this to to the many trophies they have. And this won't be just for a sec, but for the whole nation of um, Cote d'Ivoire. Kuroko down by two goals in the hill. Once again, the ball has been brought back into defense. They hardly crossed the, the midpoint. Well, Kuroko relying on the likes of uh, Baba Yaya and Richmond Lamte to be coming up with the... Uh, well, at least it's still, it's still good, heartwarming to see the fans still at it. Providing the needed support, not gone cold yet. <laughs> well, it's been interesting because they know it's just that uh, it's a cup or ceremonial cup, so not too much of the energy. They see that the Masia Santo Kodoko not exerting so much energy in the game. And again, Ansu just giving the ball away. There we go again. Easily losing the ball. I think they need to, Coach Prosperogum needs to change their approach a bit. Maybe a bit more direct might help and start going maybe from the flanks, getting the crosses and try if they can get in some headers. Now that's a good one. Again, that will be very much easy for Charles Foley to deal with it. Well, that's not the energy you expect there from Marcia Santiago de Cocalo Atara with this ball here. Better to pick it up. To the game, the Kumasi Asante Kodoko side were hoping at least just to get a chance to go on. They will be able to find some bit of space in there. I mean, 30 minutes into the game, they need to do much more. Kumasi Asante Kodoko would have to 
step it up a couple of gears more. Well, that's the situation there with the Pokemon Warriors. They do have some interesting league games coming up. Well, I'm sure they have been spoken to in terms of what they need to do. On the 9th of March, they're playing against Karela. Sam Scott Oko looking to have the deficit. And the best of decision there from Kumasiya Santiago Loco. Well, the players were just waiting for the balls inside the box. This is Mukwala. Turns well. Mukwala gets it in. And again, it's Kalu Atara commits a foul in the box there. But Kodoko do get opportunity for a corner kick. Well, this is the best chance they have. I really come close to scoring. Kumasiya Santiago Loco in the last uh, couple of minutes there. It's pretty much difficult for the one sided game, if you like. The Ivorians have continued or have done their best by way of pushing Kotoko back into their own half and now they would say that Kotoko now get a chance to see if they can express some of the, some bit of weaknesses in the defensive line of uh, the Ivorians Mukwala there the Ugandan we get to pick up uh, Kalo Watara I mean this is a reflection of what has gone on in the past 32 minutes or so and uh, Kotoko have been at the receiving end we are not seeing anything in terms of approach done differently and so when you look at the scoreline, you shouldn't really be surprised. Aseka has done all the work, and most of the action is taking place on the half of Kumasiya Santiago de Well, So the fans are here enjoying. And the Kumasiya Santiago de fans are expected to see something spectacular from the side because they are second on the Ghana League table. And so they just want to see if they can win this cup maybe because last year they lost it to their arch rivals Accra Hearts of Hook and now they have an opportunity against the set Mimosa a team they beat in 2019 to pick their two four cup and now by two goes to nail lovely corner taking shot there Kante or oh, just been given away by Kumasiya Santiago Doko looking to pick up this one and maybe an infringement against the but the Warriors. Back in 1993, when the two sides had the very strong encounter in the CAF Champions League, it was Malik Jaber, who was the head coach of Marcia Santiago at the time. Those were pretty exciting times. But it was in pretty good form. And I think Mimosa also had great stars. That they lighted up the whole continent with great football. That's a lovely play there from Set Mimosa and that was a quality display there by Atawa Tara. Possession, Kumasiya Santiago Loco and Charles here comes out. Let's clear his line. Oh, good play, good play once again. Andy! Oh, looking to get the third goal, but what a lovely piece of skills there from Ahmad Agro. Did all the right things, but I think it should have been unselfish on that occasion should probably have laid it on for the to the far side for their oncoming player oh lovely work again from Regal just but, that pass up to the coup to be fair to him I think he he had he thought he had a good chance to score I mean from that angle he could also have scored Well, an interesting uh, tactical switch there by Marcia Santiago of course to push uh, Justice Blay on uh, the right full back position. Yes, Mukwala on the ascendant here gets the ball in, but again goes straight to the waiting arms of Charles Foley. Oh, well, that's the ever present goalkeeper there for the Ivorian team, Foley. He's conceded. Nine goals so far and has 11 clean sheets. Man who was born in Togo, moved to Ivory Coast at a younger age. 
has a dual citizenship and currently plays for the Ivorian national team. And again, have, have reiterated how he was part of the Ivorian squad that just won the AFCON. Amand Begal. Uh, they do have a player down. Got an impressive resume. And in the current league, I mean, with, with such figures, such statistics, I mean, it shows you that you have to do a bit more work to get the ball past him. And clearly, we haven't seen the Comanche Santa Cotoco really working to achieve that. Well, the two goals conceded there by Frederick Asari, Kumasi Santigodo's goalkeeper, has conceded eight goals. He's, missed, he's made the seven clean sheet, and this is a spectacular strike there from Alfonso Yao. Really good strike. And the penalty that was confidently dispatched there by the captain. Very good yeah. Well, there's the fans or the occupying tertiary. They have always been supporting the side and always been around anytime Kumasi Asante Koroko is playing any football game, whether in Kumasi or outside mm -hmm. in the league. They've been very, very supportive. Man. Absolutely supportive for the side. It's just about what they need to get back into the And they the have the energy. The Just energy to continue. <laughs> Even though Kumasi Asante Kodoko is down by two goals in L-Day, it's still going on. I mean, that's good to see. Really It'll encouraging. Be a lot of meetings uh, here between the coach and his assistant to see if they can change or tweak this, uh, the setup. He hasn't really been the sort of start they were expecting from Kumasi Asante Kodoko against Asep Kumusa. They've been a bit lethargic in the approach there. Yeah. They've been going with the long balls and that's not been working for them and so far the two players are thrown there between Otara and that of uh, Okwala hasn't really worked to perfection no it hasn't, it hasn't. play I mean it, it, it looks like a training session really for a second most at the moment uh, could have got an infringement there the early foul was on Mukwala and the referee Let's call. That's approaching the half hour mark, and obviously, it is the visitors who currently have surprised Kumasi Asante Koroko in this President's Cup. So that's the first foul there. Maybe a chance to get back into the game before we get into half time. Well, that's exactly what the fans will be uh, craving for at the moment. That would be, yeah. be super. I mean, that would give them some motivation to come back extra strong because coming back 2 0 down is quite an arduous task. I hope they, they work out something really good from this one. Marcia Sante Kozakot with well, this uh, set piece now by Bayaya and uh, Richmond Lamte has got some bullet there and it also goes wide. Do you remember some of the Sumptuous goals, his man has been scoring for Kumasi Asante got for a long range, but not too quite what well expected, or has not been coming the way he wants it. Nothing about this man, he's uh, expected to leave the club as uh, his contract is about to run out. Maybe he does run out in June. There's been talk about him staying or perhaps leaving. Richmond Lamte, just about leaving for Libya, where uh, the club just applied the brakes on the move. Hoping to see a lot more juicy contract for which one Lamte. I guess so. Uh, the great exposure for him if he gets a good offer and he's a short of constant playing time. I mean, to only better the player. Credit to the Ivorians, they have really uh, played Kumasi Asante Kodoko. They have been pretty much very close and playing high football, ensuring that anytime they have possession, Kumasi Asante Kodoko are unable to run out from their defensive shells. And so the Ivorians have really kept caps on the wings or the wingers of Kumasi Asante Kodoko. 
There have been barely any runs down the flanks for Comanche Santa Carreco, whilst their opponents have had it pretty easy here. They're trying all the time to go through the middle, and it's very congested in the middle. Iberians have made it very difficult for Kotoko to penetrate. I just do not know why they are not varying their tactics. Probably waiting to half time for from Pep Talk to restructure their build-up play again. A chance to see if the Kumasiya Santa Kotoko, the likes of Peter Amidu, has really been outmarked there. Uh, they let a wing. I've also not seen so much run there from Michael Dramina on the right side of attack. Yeah, another wasted opportunity there from Asia Santa Godoko. Bukwala was a intended target. I've not seen any him. impressive off the run, I mean, running off, off the ball, getting themselves into empty spaces for good passes. I haven't seen that for, from, the, from the players up front. So, anytime you have anyone, the likes of Lamte and Cole, to distribute the balls, I mean, we haven't had them in very good positions to get themselves ready for passes anyway. So, just the same. Is this Babayaya? Ansu? Kereku? Very unproductive short passes in midfield and it ends up nowhere. I can't see here again. Be released quicker. Oh, lovely play there from Ukwala. What's this week waiting for the round of Dramina, uh, Michael? Oh, stood. I stopped in his tracks there. Wasn't really interested in the runs there from the club's attacking play. Well, the president's cap, you see, Kumasi at San Tegodo got picking up eight wins back in 1973, 1984, 2004, 2005, 2008, 2016, 2017. Last time Kumasi at won the president cup was back in 2019. That's a folk that picked up six wins in there. Prior to this game, Kodoko picked up the restaurant game with the Great Olympics. He won one nil against RTU and also had a chance to pick up a win against uh, Bofokotano and goes into Heart of Lions. Are the fans not too excited about the decision by the officials from Togo? Was a foul there on one local Bali by Mukwala. Set Mimosa picked up a defeat against Widat. It was an away game in the CAF Champions League. He also drew goalers with Simba and picked up 3 0 win against Wanneng Galaxy in the CAF Champions League group, as well as uh, going away to win by two goals to nil. At least the last game played before this game, Aset Mimosa won by Golden against Widat. And Quality defensive clearance there. Lovely play there by Durandi. Well, the fact that they're leading by two goals to nil, I said, Mimosa really shows the class and power. Now they have, they are currently on top of the Ivorian League by, with 11 points. And repeating the same performance here by leading Kumasa Sante Godoko by two goals to nil. We're doing two minutes of at a time. Already a sec leading by two goals to nail.
Colocó looking to find a way out of the course being fouled. A 2 0 this there for the visitors. Having really outplayed Marcia Sante Colocó and indeed not allowing the Porcupine Warriors any space at all to operate. With those spectacular goals there from Alfonso Yao in the 14th minute, of the first half. Then Colocó just conceding the penalty with a handball situation against Justice Blay. The Pokemon Warriors really have tested the goalkeeper of our site Mimosa Charles Foley. The far most busiest goalkeeper in the game is Federica Sari. And here comes Kumasa Santa Kodoko again trying to release the pass pretty much quickly. And uh, Tamiru has been pretty much quiet in the game, hasn't he? Lamte. Hideku. Rocky Jamina. Blay. Lays the ball out for Carlo Watara, the target. Rocky Jamina trying the long range here. Mukwala is the target here. Mukwala in the box. Mukwala runs well. Kotoko couldn't quite get this one in. Just at close range. And it's been timely cleared away. Looking to have the deficit before the break. And Kumasia Sante Kotoko are still far from doing that. They need to zard it with that timely clearance. But the corner kick there for Kumasiya Sante Kotoko. Corner kick in. Ooh, goes out wide. And so that's it for the first 45 minutes of the game. It's been the visitors of Sepp Mimosas who really have controlled and have really played the most exciting game in this President Cup 2024 edition. Kumasiya Santo got a few occasions. They tried their best to see if they can have the deficit, but that was not a story. After Alfonso Yao strike and that of uh, the captain for the side, Nadel Aka, clearly the situation is and the separation between the two sides. It has become the situation once again, the story to be told by Kumasiya Santo Kotoko and Asep Mimosa in celebrating Ghana's 67th anniversary. At halftime, it is here at Kumasiya Santo Kotoko and the Kumasi Stadium. It is. Kumasi Asante Kotokoneo, Asek Mimosa 2. Wow. 